just a bloke in a bar. But yeah, this Jersey bro brought it in uh, Paris. So what I tried to do is every major city that I went to over in Europe, I bought their soccer jersey. Oh yeah, man. Uh, I got this Fior- Fiorentina, I think it is. Um, I think it's F- is it Florentina or F- I think it's Fiorentina, um, and it's like purple. Yeah, it's mad. Cool. It's hectic. I was devo because we stopped in Naples for. Oh yeah. So we got the train and we stopped in Naples for like maybe an hour. Who's the mad team there? Uh, well, that's where Maradona played. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, that's right. Uh, How good's that docker? Oh, bro. <laughs> that mad. Bro. <laughs> we thought Joey was loose. Mate, <laughs> how's the just the bending through till Wednesday? Sweet, shakes it off, gets in a training session, goes out, scores two goals. Bro. <laughs> how's the like the, goat. the oh, and the depths of like bad people he was around, like the the, t- the crazy straight up mafia straight mafia in over in italy so you're talking about like yes. the origination of the mafia <laughs> oh my god it would have been like i wonder i always wonder with guys like that like for example like a joey and i'm not saying joey's anywhere near as like maradona or whatever yeah. in regards to that crazy um but like do they need to go out and have fun to play good footy or play good soccer mm. or would have they been better to be on the straight and narrow because you know how some people, they, it wigs them out mentally yeah, if they yeah, don't yeah. get out and have fun? I don't understand the psychology of it, yeah. but I understand it. Like you talk about, John Bones Jones talks about it. He had a reason to do it because he was like, if I go out and get shit-faced mm. and then fight, I've got an excuse for if I lose. Yep. So I get that psychology. But I just think these guys are wired a little bit different. Yeah. They, they got, they realistically, they got a few mental health issues, which yeah. is fine, but that's why they're crazy. Makes it makes them good. Yeah. So I think they just need that switch off, that release, whatever that is. But I know... If, it would be interesting to see what if they didn't do that surely they'd be surely they'd be better <laughs> surely but you know do they overtrain or yeah. what, what would it be it is it's it's a really interesting balance because mm. like a good example is and like i'm not sure like this isn't why the broncos went poorly but like a little small thing that i i heard and apologies if it's not true but i had heard when um Siebs took over the broncos mm. so we used to have this every friday or like before our game so it would have been thursday because we played a lot of friday night games but the day before our game you know the captain's run so there's a guy called springer i think he might still be at the club but he is like a legend of the club like he's been there since day dot does all the strapping takes care of everything around absolute legend he's always angry but he's a legend the boys wind him up Mm. he's always yelling and screaming and that but the boys love it we all love it anyway so i captain's run we would have the barbecue and basically what it was was as soon as you finish you go and you have a shower your family can come everyone sits around outside the sun's out beautiful day bacon eggs sausages bread and it's just like it's just it was just tradition even cokes like you know tradition like you could drink soft drink whatever and i heard and again i want to apologize if it's not correct but when sieves got there he was like this is really unhealthy the day before a game like we shouldn't be eating bacon and eggs the day before a game, which he's right. Like yeah, fair. he's a hundred percent right. Like as professional athletes, you'd probably want to be fueling yourself with something better than bacon, greasy bacon, eggs, and soft drinks. Um, and I always wonder, like, the trade off of that happiness that it brought everyone to just go bang There's and just be like, that. the boys are here, bonding, mm. families. Is there something that outweighed the nutrition that you got? Again, I don't know what the right answer is, mm. but. I'm of the mind like maybe the bonding is worth more than the because mm. like who who enjoys rocking up and eating healthy as after it you know mm. what, people want to relax after mm. it so I don't know you probably no, know reckon, more about this I reckon it's stuff. like a pick your battle scene it's the same yeah. with ending in life like yeah. whether it's giving nutrition advice with training mm. that 80 20 rule like I reckon there's something in there's a little bit of a switch off if it's just constant are the boys just kind of like fuck this comes too you know much I mean? but I mean again it's not f***ing strippers on a Wednesday like Maradona <laughs> Yeah, there's a difference between a bacon and egg McMuffin. <laughs> these are the two. <laughs> these are the two extremes we're talking about. Maradona in his heyday, yeah. ending till Thursday, and bacon and egg on the day before a game. <laughs> but man, remember when you were young? Like, I remember back in the Raiders days. I'm trying to get into the psychology, but like me and and I'm I'm pretty disciplined. I'm yeah. someone who like likes to prepare. But there was something in terms of bonding and connection where like we would go out on a Wednesday night, mm. play on a Saturday. Yeah. But then the the compounding effect if like you killed it on the Saturday and then you're like, you are you a little bit feeling invincible? There's oh yeah. In I think that's what it is. And you're going out <laughs> and you just, you want to celebrate it. Like, you, And then you look on the flip side, 
Fernsey, for example, the coach, he had like all the securities on on lock, like yeah, all the okay. security guards in Canberra. You'd think it'd go the other way. I don't know what Brisbane was like, but it wasn't like an experience where he got looked after. It wasn't a Townsville. You know what oh, I mean? It was okay. like Shandor and Blake are out there. They're in the bus. It's like you're getting oh. they're, they're straight text messages straight yeah. away. So Wayne had that. I'm, yeah. pre- I'm pretty confident Wayne had like most securities would message him, yeah. but he kind of let it go as long as you're playing good footy. Mm. I've told yeah, you. That, that was, that was the same that thing. But yeah, if you're playing good, no one's saying nothing. No one's saying nothing. No one's saying nothing. We actually, I've told this story before, but uh, the Broncos. So me, Darius, I think it was me and Darius. We were out with Carmichael Hunt, Justin Hodges, and there was a place called Uber. And so it was just like a Wednesday night, uni night. Anyway, so we're young bucks, man. We might have been in our first, maybe our first year, bro. Like mm. young, we're talking 18. Yeah, right. We're talking Carmichael Hunt. You know, what he, year is this? This would have been six or seven. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe eight at the latest, yeah. but six or seven. So super early. Hodjo's one of the best. Like K is just exploded on the scene. People forget. Remember that first couple of years with K? He was, he was the, the superstar. Man. The superstar, the step, the hair. Anyway, so we're at Uber and we are think we're killing it, you know, like, yeah, like with Carmichael, with Hodjo, like, yeah. you know what it's like when, the young, when you're the young fellow with the old, yeah, and then yeah. when you're the older guy and the young guys are with you, they're yeah. loving it. <laughs> and so we think we're killing it, getting, you know, drinking uh, double spoon off black with red cordial. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> now oh, I would never be caught there doing that now. Uh, anyway, so I thought we were killing it, had a great night and like, you know, getting all this attention and just everything wrong for a young player. Anyway, we get called in the office, I think it was either the day before, the day after or the day after that. So one or two days after, me and Darius and Wayne's like, stop, you're not allowed to go out on Wednesday. Stop going out during the week. Mm. And, you know, me and Darius kind of were a bit silent. He's like, why are you, you know, you're a bit off it or whatever. And we kind of got, we didn't say it in like aggressive way. We were like, well, you know, Hodjo and Kay were there. Um, and he's like, I know Hodjo and Kay were there, but unless you're playing like Hodjo and Kay, <laughs> you, love that. you don't get to go out. And yeah. we were like, you know what? That's fair yeah. enough. That's what fair enough. What a great enough. response. Um, and I think that's why Wayne has transcended generation is because really at the end of the day, as long as you're not doing anything illegal, if you're playing good footy, that's all that matters. Mm. And he literally says that. There's not many, I don't, ha- I don't I wish I had of experience like playing under Wayne, but there's mm. not many coaches who have the actual human element. Mm. Like, bro, you know, you've been around teams, you've been around businesses. Oh. Like, there's a way to interact with people, even to get the best out of them. You don't have to be a full weirdo, oh. which is like what happens with coaches. Even that response, you'd be like, yeah. Sweet, you get it. You're not gonna, you're not gonna kick rocks and just like. And be at least he's filthy. honest. Yeah, you know, you just so, want yeah, honesty. You know what? Good point. Good point. <laughs> and even if you disagree with it, you're like, at least I know why. Yeah. You know, at least I know why. Well, you're right, man. So many coaches get like caught in the army drill sergeant. Mm. Like everyone's got to be like a machine. Everyone's got to be like a robot. Everyone has to weigh this. That used to kill me the most, bro. The weight. You've got oh, to, yeah, you've got yeah. to put on six kilos. Nah, or seven what got kilos. me was like every day pissing in the cup and doing the hydration oh. test go away I'm like, not, seriously I'm not doing oh that. man um we used to like it was so bad at, at one time at the bronx and wayne never used to do that like mm. wayne barely did skinnies he, he's, he did skin folds but he didn't do ever do weight i don't ever recall being weighed by them saying you've got to be here um but yeah when hooked took over he was really like you've got a target weight at the start of the process and you roll in you say you need to be 90 kilos or whatever which is a lot for me at that, mm. that age and i think you get fined if you miss your weight so like if you miss your weight if you're a young player and so like me and dan gagai and that we'd be sculling like massive things of water <laughs> just to try and hit the weight and then we spewing up in fitness and it was just like too much and that was like weight if as long as you're making your tackles it shouldn't yeah. really matter i understand why they do it so you can you know handle contact and that but i yeah. remember that like because it would have been about 2006, 2007. I was at the Coogee Bay. Yeah. I think I've told you this before. I think I was with like AJ around a tomato. Yeah. Because he knew like Hodjo and that for the yeah, Broncos. Yeah, and yeah. you were there. And bro, you look like, I remember because I'm young and you <laughs> were just like, I was like, fuck, you, you seem like big. And just like, <laughs> <laughs> like you just come onto the scene then. I remember clear as. <laughs> no way. That's crazy. That is crazy. Coogee. What was I doing in Coogee? Just running a mark. Mate, running a mark. I can't even remember being in Coogee, to be honest. <laughs> Um, but anyway, uh, welcome to an episode of Packer Up Boys uh, with the great Chandorel, uh brought to you by Sportsbet. Now, make sure to always, guys, if you're going to have a punt, make sure to do it responsibly. Uh, we're going to put some on the YouTube, we'll put some uh, a lower third up uh, to where you can get some help if you're struggling. Um, 
Only ever pump what you're willing to lose, guys. Do it more as fun. Don't be crazy with it. But brought to you by Sportsbet. Make sure to gamble responsibly. Let's have a look at the odds for this week's game because uh, there might be some a bit of jam here. There might be a bit of... Uh, so you've got the Parrot Eels versus the Sharks. Sharky's paying 260. I don't mind it. Mm, I don't I like mind it. it. I reckon that's all right, especially because they'll be looking to bounce back from last mm. week, surely. What, what, what were your thoughts on round one? A bit of pretty surprising, really. Yeah. I think I didn't do it too well in the tips, but yeah, f- f- a few smokies. Like, I didn't really, I, I tip Storm, but I didn't really expect them to win, if I'm yeah, honest. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, Dolphins, Roosters. I just feel like it's a it's a nice little mix up, a bit of a shake up for round one. It wasn't like as obvious as everyone yep. thought it was going to be. Agreed. Like, uh, Broncos upset, yeah. then you got How Rabbitohs good? going to Shark Park. And I think the most games finish within a 10 point margin. Um, but yeah, so two dollars sixty for the Sharkies. Uh, then you got the Brizzy Broncos, dollar eighty. The Cowboys are two bucks, but they may have come down to about dollar ninety, I think, at the moment. Um, man, that's a tough one. I don't know. I don't know what I would go there in regards to value. Probably, honestly, that's a fifty-fifty coin. The Cowboys got back. Cowboys and Broncos. Mm. Broncos paying dollar eighty. Cowboys paying, I think, two bucks. Yeah, but that's that's the odds at the moment. That's the odds right now. Two bucks. Two bucks. Okay. Uh, then you got the Sydney Roosters versus the Warriors. Four bucks the Warriors. Ooh. I mean, for how poor the Roosters were last week. <laughs> Look, I'm still tipping the Roosters, but yeah. I reckon there's a bit of value there. There's Four some bucks. Value there for sure. Four bucks. You're putting something on that. Or I mean, what's the what's the line you reckon there? Uh, twelve and a half. Twelve and a half. That's not bad. That's not bad with the Roosters. Okay. I don't reckon that's a blowout, worst case. Surely, surely. Um, and then what have we got next? We've got, we've got Roosters. We've got Dolphins, Raiders. Dolphins, $235.60. I'm tipping Raiders. I think that's $235 is okay. Mm. Storm, $1.39. Bulldogs, 3 bucks. That's I reckon Bulldogs should be further out than that because I, I cannot see the Bulldogs beating Storm. No. Like, that's me lock. If there was a short thing to punt on for $1.40 or $1.39... There's no way Storm are losing at home. Surely not. Well, I had this, you know, gamble responsibly, but I had this 15 grand multi run on the Bulldogs last year when they beat Para. Yeah. It was filthy. Oh, no way. How would they? There was no way they were winning that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh <laughs> no. Oh, it was filthy. Um, then we've got... Uh, <laughs> it ruins a game for you when you oh, lose uh, like I'm a last not, leg. I'm not, I'm not betting against the Dolphins. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tigers, Knights. Knights are two fifteen. Tigers dollar seventy one, and then you got St George and Gold Coast Titans at dollar ninety each. Mm. Um, then they've also got a special on sports bet. Alex Twelve to score his first try this season <laughs> uh, is paying a dollar seventy five, and that includes finals. Get on it, dollar seventy five. Surely they get up. It's good value. Good value. Um, as always, guys, uh, make sure to gamble responsibly and only bet what you can afford to lose, guys. Only bet what you can afford to lose. Just a bit of fun with your mates. Don't go crazy. Uh, but that's thanks to Sportsbet, guys. Super, super stoked to have them on board. Uh, and, yeah, we've got some huge things planned, actually. Got an interview with Alex Volkanovsky oh, yes. next Thursday at, at Sportsbet's HQ. He's a goat. He is literally the goat. You reckon they're uh, going to do the rematch? Oh, you got to ask him. Yeah, I'll, I'll ask him. Surely. I, I, I just think the, the thing that's in his favour is the heat that... Um, Islam's cop, like, bro, mm. what he did, <laughs> mate, crazy. He definitely beats him next time too. I, don't I, I reckon he beats him too. I think that Volks didn't realise. I think Volks thought uh, you had to. Makachev, but I thought I reckon he didn't realise that he would make him gas. Yeah, because no one thought Islam would gas. No, and he did. No, and whereas Volks was going harder at the end. But you've also got to go in a little bit tentatively, yeah, for sure. thinking like, no, this, like, neither of them knew. Yeah, yeah that's so, so true. Fuck. So true, and he's so much bigger too. You don't want to get caught. Um, but yeah, so that's it. Uh, Sportsbet oh, HQ, good, and that's what I was talking about earlier this week uh, with Sportsbet coming on board. We can do sick stuff like this, like Best. Volks in Melbourne doing an interview with him uh, in the HQ. Uh, so thanks to Sportsbet, appreciate it. If you're going to have a punt, make sure to do it responsibly, but make sure to do it with Sportsbet if you are going to have a punt. Uh, is there anyone, any Smokies? Do you reckon this year that are that have jumped out here after round one? I mean, even for your sake, you'd love to see the Broncos do something. Come on, boys. Surely. That'd be nice. Oh, my God. What was last? Last year was a poor start, picked it up, and then dropped off, didn't they? They had a No, they had a really good start. Did they? Then they dropped a bit, and then they picked it back mm. up. Yeah, yeah. But they beat the Rabbitohs round one last year as well. And then I think there was like one or two games where they might have just struggled a little bit, and then they went on a little bit of a run. It's a, it's a bit of a it's an open one, isn't it? I know it's so good though. It's so good. You know, rugby. Storm aren't just a, a lock. Roosters clearly aren't a lock. Oh, man. So it's open. 
Are you a Raiders man or are you a Penrith man? Which which team? Well, or Storm man. Storm man, yeah. Okay. It's always that. But I got a soft spot for the Raiders. But okay, yeah, I feel like it's always you. Like, well, that, yeah, I think I'm a Storm man. You Storm man? Yeah. Not some Phuket team <laughs> when you're over there. Phuket vagabond. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mate, you would have been a star over there. Did you play when you were over there? Yeah, I had a cheeky couple of like rugby union games. Yeah, I don't know if I was supposed to or not, but it was it was pretty funny. It's pretty interesting. Did you imagine if they tried to ping you? <laughs> oh, mate, fuck! They off. would. The way they explained it to me was like competitive ping pong is off the cards. Oh, like, no. what about the carry on? Beat Jesus, it. beat it! <laughs> oh my god. Um, what was it like living over in Bali? Hey, it was what? Thailand, Thailand. Thailand. I so say Thailand. What three years? Three years, man. So good. Like, would you go back? Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. It's hard. It gives you, it changes your whole perspective on life. Like, but when I went over there, remember, I, remember, I had that cafe. The first cafe yeah. I opened up. So I went to a hotel. I'd been there before with like Rennie and Willie Tong on this like training holiday. It was pretty different. Went over there. There was a space open out the front. I was like, wow, I had this idea for this cafe. I opened it up. Next thing you know, I'm doing twelve hour shifts, pumping smoothies. Oh, this thing starts killing it. But. I had like 10 pieces of clothing, rode a scooter, beach was five minutes in every direction. Yeah. Like I was, I was single doing good things. Yeah. Like it, was, it was a good time. <laughs> doing great things. good time. Representing Australia very was, well. Of course. Yeah. I really, literally for Australia, just flying the flag. <laughs> um, but mate, it was a crack of time. So like when you live on an island, plus you could travel everywhere way easy. Yeah. Like I had a good life. Did you, did you learn like how you can live with quite a like little? Yeah. I just think it's not, I think it helped that I was living on an island. So, mm. like, what was the kit that you actually had to wear, mm. if any? Yep. Um, so that helped. But, yeah, you just don't have value in those things because other people around you don't. Yeah, I think okay. you're a product of your environment. And you're more just focused on, like, living. Yeah. Living. Just, like, going to the and beach. Yeah. So there's new people coming in all the time yeah, from all okay. different walks of life. That was probably the main thing. I think being in our footy bubble, mm. you didn't mix with too many. You just went travelling. It's yeah. the same thing. You realise, yeah. like, how insignificant what we're doing <sighs> Mate, is seriously. to the rest of the world. <laughs> seriously. You know what I mean? We are nothing compared to, like, we, tiny, bro. Crazy. Tiny. And for you, bro, it would have been even crazier. I'm a footy player, but you've got this massive thing. No one, you can't talk to rugby league. No. Without, like, no one knows what it is. They don't care. <laughs> they don't, they couldn't care. Like that, that you alone say, is wild. You say rugby league to someone, they think it's rugby. Mm. That's how much they don't know what it is, yeah. which is well, crazy. people know what Aussie rules is more yeah. than rugby league. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. What was the, so what was a? is there anyone that stands out to you that you met over there that you were like, fuck, that's cool. Like a, I don't know, an SAS soldier or fucking someone doing some cool work. I met some. I, mean, I met some crazy people, but um, like there were heaps of, there were heaps of rent. But you know, it was more so like everyone has a story. Mm. You know, I remember. <laughs> I'm a wild story. <laughs> Tell me. But basically, we'll, we'll position this the right way. But <laughs> why well, at one point, and it's not a, it's not the worst thing because I didn't do anything wrong. But I got deported. What? the country, yeah. <laughs> Where to? Back home, but get okay. this, right? So long story short, I basically got deported um, <laughs> for like a one day overstay. There was a little bit of politics about it okay. because of I sold a business and then came back and but the politics, right? So it got done and like the carry on, bro. Went to, went to prison for two days what? in Thailand. Like it was wild. So what was, okay, how, like, how did it all happen? They rock up to your house? Yeah, just like I was working and I had overstayed my visa one day. I, there was a, when I say politics, I reckon it was set up. Yeah, okay. It was pretty much staged, right? No way. So anyway, get, get locked up. All of a sudden I'm in this Thai prison for two days. Filthy, like I'm just cannot believe this is happening. So I go through that little experience. Then you're then you're in the car and they say, "Okay, we got you got to be deported." I was like, "What do you mean? Like yeah. my whole life's here. Yeah. I can't be deported." Mm. Um, ended up getting through it, but like then it was then it was just the politics of that country. Like I love that you have so much freedom, but then it can be a little bit dodgy yeah, in yeah. Asian countries. So I was like, "All right, what do you want to do? Do you want to catch the forty hour bus to Bangkok, or do you want to catch a plane? If you want to catch a plane, it's going to cost you X." I was like, oh, oh no God. way. So escorted. Then you go to the detention center in Bangkok, which was putrid. What what was it? Okay, so what was a prison like in Thailand? Uh, like I didn't go to I didn't go to like a crazy, jail, crazy jail. prison. Yeah. yeah. So and luckily enough, like, you know, most of them are smaller and shorter. Yep. And I just kind of just stuck to myself. And I remember getting to the detention center and there was like all these people from probably like Burma or like I don't know where from. There's yeah. about 50 of them. I just had my little book. And I was just what were like, you reading? 
I don't know, actually. Really? Actually, you know. No, you know. Oh, this is a crazy <laughs> how this ties in. Bruh. <laughs> I was reading Craig Bellamy's book. No way. <laughs> Swear to God. In prison. So I get in there. I'm like, move. I had enough. Like, I'll just, at that point, yeah. I had enough. Lay down on my book. I got about this much room. Everyone else is around. Oh. You know, go on the toilet. God knows where. So I'm you're on the down. floor. Yeah, on the floor. Lay down. Oh. Bellamy's book sleeping underneath me. <laughs> that makes it so no much better. No way. <laughs> Bellyache. Next morning. The reason why that's significant, because I remember reading Bellyache's book. And I said, I always wanted to go back to Melbourne. Mm. And I said to my manager, like, I need to, I need to write him a letter. I can't have you um, just reaching up. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I've shared the story before about how I wrote him a letter and said, this is who I am. This is the story. This is what I think I can do. Mm. But um, yeah, and then the next morning, thank God, I was only there for one day. They're like, all right, you're flying out. I was like, sweet. Yeah, I'm going back to Australia. Get mm. to the airport. I've got a New Zealand passport at that point, not oh. an Aussie one. And they're like, nah, you have to go back to your home country. I said, look, <laughs> oh, look bro, I'm not from there. Yeah. I need to go home to Australia. <laughs> nah. So I go fly to Auckland, walk out of the airport, walk back in, buy a ticket, oh. back to Sydney, finally get home. And it was just like, oh, what a journey. No, but a cracker right. story. Yeah. One, you know, one day we'll, um, we'll, t we'll do the tell all version. But uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty funny. But Bella, that's so funny that that's, that was the time. Because I remember reading on the plane. And uh, yeah, I slept on Bell's book in, a, in the detention center. So you're in a detention center and then you played for him a yeah. couple of years later. Yeah, so good. That's wild, that bro. Wild. That was a crazy like journey. And there's heaps of, so many awesome stories. Some of them involve a little bit of adversity, but mate, it's one day it's a, it's a chapter in the book. So it's pretty funny. Oh mate, <laughs> that's wild. They're reading Bellamy's book and then you ended up playing for the Melbourne Storm. Yeah. And so, so, okay, so yeah, over, did you plan to go back and you just, your flight was a day later or something? For? When, when you overstayed your visa by yeah. a day, had no, you- No, I just didn't know. Like you, you got to go down to the um, immigration center and just get it sorted. So that, for oh. that one, with what I had, I was, I would have just had to fly out to like Singapore and then come back. That's how it works. Mm. But had no idea. So it was just, it was too like, yeah, I think it was, a, there was a bit of setup in it. Okay. Wow. Yeah. That's- Oh man, that's a, that is genuinely wild. Because like, if you get the wrong person in that situation, they oh, could just 100%. chuck you in the prison and say, "Fuck you, can't." Yeah, who knows? And you know, beat it. Yeah, you want to have a bit of. Oh. You, you're grateful for having a little bit of smarts about your. Yeah. Own, you, the way you grew up to. Where's your head? To handle that. Yeah, where's your head going with that? I'm more. F I'm not, like I understand the situation, how I got into it. Yeah. So I'm filthy about that. Okay. I'm sitting in a. I was actually, I had a, had a mate involved in the same situation, so I was all right. But I'm sitting in the prison and I'm just like, this is bullshit. Yeah. Two days. Yeah. Like, it's filthy. It makes so I was you more like, like angry. <laughs> it makes you appreciate. I mean, don't get me wrong. In Australia, we still have some corrupt people. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. But it does make you appreciate living in a country where at least there's usually some kind of it process does. for this. So you can be on either side of the corruption. Yeah. You can be on the side where you're like, oh, how good's this? Yeah. It's a bit dodged. <laughs> you can do whatever. Yeah. But you're not getting pulled up for most things. Yeah. But then on the other side, when you're on the other end of it, you you're just smashed. like, I wish this was normal because yeah. this wouldn't have been happening. Yeah, wow. So it kind of goes both ways. Far out. So what, what, what about people that you met whilst pouring smoothies? What was it like? Oh, so I mean, like, I would have had... Like I had, um, at that time, everyone trained at a place called Tiger Muay Thai. So mm, like mm. all of the best UFC fighters, like they yeah. would all come through, but I kind of loved it. I was, that's that's where I fell in love with like business and customer service mm. and that. And really, I just had like cool little thing going, just interacting with people all day. But yeah, yeah. I was literally back there sweating, just pumping Pouring out smoothies. smoothies. I was a oh, gun right too, eh? some good smoothies. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Oh, how good. Oh, we're out in a prison. That's Between insane. that and being like, I were, had, obviously I was at a gym and then a trainer. Mm. Um, and mate, it was, it was wild. You just had, like I had, I had a pretty good, how do I say, touch point with um, everyone that would come in to the, to the street. Yeah, the okay. Spot. You'd have a, a vibe for what's going on. Yeah. Far out. That's and a mad. good, nice little early interaction to any, any newcomers to the area. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, not many Instagram models go to. No, no, not many females. Not at all. <laughs> Did you see an increase over the years? Like as Instagram became more popular <laughs> and like more Instagram models obviously go on Instagram. You know what's funny about Insta like Instagram and this is guys and girls. I got to like, um, when I scroll past, I got to squint to be like, are my eyes fucked or is their skin blurry? But it's a filter usually. Yeah. You know what I mean? The worst is like the stories because they were all pumping the mad filters. Yeah. And have fact, the fact that now you have to check, oh, yeah, cool, baby In blush, the corner. Yeah. Whatever it is. Yeah. Like. 
and that whether it's guy or girl, you're like, am I am I going like heart like a little bit blind because their 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 picture is all blurry or I can't really make out the facial features. <laughs> it's crazy. It's honestly crazy. Some of the shit you hear about like changing fully, like they're changing facial features through apps and that. Bro, you know what? I honestly think and. Look, I haven't thought this through massively, but I thought about it quite a bit. Now, I'm not like a big regulation guy. I don't. I think that I do think regulation is good for sure. But I like should they be legal filters like that? Like, where is the positive? Think about where we're going now. Have you oh. seen that like the AI stuff? Oh man, it's got, crazy. You can you can put any voice on any person. Oh. Like it's mental. And so, like when I see like for example, young boys or young girls, if you keep putting filters on your face when you go on social media. You're gonna get used to seeing yourself like that. And then it'll just get, you just have to put more and more filters on because mm. you're not gonna accept, like you're gonna feel ugly. Mm. Whereas like if there was no filter to do that, you would accept, this is what I look like. Mm. I should, I'm happy with it. Whereas I feel like the damage it does to young people constantly seeing people look like, put it this way, remember when we were growing up and you never had this fucking problem, but I did. <laughs> like there was only a few, like, a few people that were hot you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I like get you. in one in the, there'd be like two girls or you guys. You wouldn't just become hot. You wouldn't just become hot. And you there'd be like two won't. girls or guys that were hot in the grade. And they were known as the hot people. Everyone else was just normal, normal people. Whereas like now, everyone looks the same. Mm. And like being hot is like, it's like, yeah, mad, but everyone's hot to a mm. degree. Obviously, you know, this fucking glamour's like yourself rolling around. But, <laughs> yeah, but do you know what I'm saying though? Yeah. It used to be a big deal. Like mad sorts. Um, used no, to be look, big deal. And I know you would have been tempted by a filter on Instagram every now and again. And you're an advocate for the <laughs> Mate, I don't look. even know. I don't even know. Is there a beak filter? <laughs> Surely there's a beak filter out there. Could you imagine if all my photos started rolling up and I've got this mad fucking nose? <laughs> That'd be funny. Awesome. <laughs> That'd be funny. Yes, yeah, so I should do it. I should start putting a beak filter on my photos. <laughs> let, let us know in the comment section. Should I start just trolling everyone, putting a beak filter on my photos? And then everyone thinks I've got a nose job. Um, you know what is funny is like being a good sort, you're like a nuclear bomb walking around for relationships. So like a good relationships, go, like the power that you wield, it's almost like Spider-Man. <laughs> because think about it, like let's say you're a good sort and there's, a, there's just a normal relationship of two average looking people. You have the power to completely annihilate that relationship because <laughs> most people aren't strong enough to go, okay, you're a good sort, but I'm not going to go near it. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there is a lot of power in that. There's a, that's a, with great power comes great responsibility. Right. You're like Spider-Man <laughs> of the streets. <laughs> oh my God. I just realized that. Because like, think about like celebrities, for example. If you're Drake, how many relationships do you reckon he's ruined? It's game over. He's doing whatever he wants. Doing whatever he wants. You're not stopping it. And you're, you're just going, oh, okay, I guess... That's the way life is. <laughs> you just keep moving. And to him, it's nothing. He's just exploded your whole world apart. <laughs> Fucking hell. Drizzy, stop it, bros. Drizzy. Um, oh, man, how good. All right, now, I've got actually, I've got me notes here, me show notes. Listen, as I said, listen on the- that mic? Hey? That oh, mic. mate. <laughs> Seriously, it's doing me head in. It's gone floppy. Mate, it's gone floppy. Talking about glamours, that's why. <laughs> I have to do this. Um, <clears throat> can you hear me all right, Matty? Yeah. Uh, actually, I had some, some thoughts that came to me head the other day. When you had a missus, mm. did she just like randomly text you during the day of the things that you've done doing wrong or done wrong? Like for example, <laughs> you left this out or- I feel like this is coming from a, from a personal place. Yeah, definitely coming from a personal <laughs> place. Or, you know, like you haven't done this or you should do this. Do you ever get, do you used to get random texts like that just during the yeah, day? Yeah, I feel like in, in hindsight, they were definitely a bit more aggressive than that. Though. <laughs> <laughs> that was my experience. That was your experience? Because <laughs> like I'll get like literal random, like you, know, you, um, you left your clothes folded on the bench and it's like, okay, yeah. I'll see it when I get back. Like, and I'll fix it when I get yeah. home. If and it's a problem for you, then that's like a you thing. Yeah. For me, my clothes being on the floor, it's not a problem. And also, my wife publicly shames me. So <laughs> she'll like, she'll be like walking in my room, which is supposed to be my room. Yeah. So I got one room in the whole house, bro. Yeah. And it's just the office. That's it. <laughs> Whereas she has everywhere else she can do whatever she wants in it. One room is supposed to be my, my domain. She'll walk in and like screenshot, I folded these clothes two weeks ago and they're still not put away. <laughs> and then she'll tag me on Instagram and be like, I'll be like, I'm getting publicly shamed for no reason here. This is nonsense. Um, but I mean, she's probably right if I'm being honest. 
what would your rebuttal be like if you if you had if you had if you had a license to publicly shame? What are you what are you targeting? What am I targeting? You know, you're oh. not folding the clothes. What's Oh, I wouldn't do that on so I wouldn't do that on social media. <laughs> <laughs> Telling your wife she didn't follow the clothes. Holy <laughs> shit. Talk about getting cancelled. I'll be gone in a second. Um, what would my public rebuttal be? Uh, you're moody as anything. <laughs> like I'm on a, an emotional roller coaster every day. You wake up and it's like the lottery. Yeah, Is it a good get? day or a bad day today? Because I don't get to choose. My wife chooses. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> um, but no, she's actually fucking fantastic. I'm not. I'm being, she is quite moody though. I'll, I'm not gonna not gonna sugarcoat that. Very moody. Um, I'll see. You know what I was watching the other day, looking at the other day, Netflix. And sometimes when I see the top ten in Netflix, it makes me lose faith in humanity. Because then you're realizing like what the zeitgeist is. Like what is everyone? You know, you see the top ten. True. And some of the as in what? Yeah. So you ne- you're like what everyone's watching. Yeah. And you're what going. Are we talking. And oh, we're we talking like Love Island and mm. fucking, bro. I've been guilty of watching. You're guilty of Love Island. Yeah. The English one though. Only okay. the English one. Only the Pommy one. Yeah. Well, my missus loves maths. True. How do you? I love a maths dinner. Oh it's, my god. It's drama. But it's just like it's what I don't. How do you? <laughs> voluntarily go on that show no you don't that's first let's bring it back first of all you don't go on the show come on you can watch married at first sight it's a death sentence unless like you're just like yeah you know what i need this i need the following i need something yeah exactly there you nailed it you nailed it it's all about following that's (laughs) it to me you can't you can't no offense to anyone who has found love i think there's been one instance but like you can't tell me you're going on there just going you know what I'm going to find the one. Yeah. Just surely. Surely not. Surely. Like go stand in a bar. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Just stand there. Someone will come up to you. I mean, like women, for example, you're always going to yeah, get hit sweet. on. You're sweet. Dudes, bro, just hit the gym. Eventually, yeah. some chick that likes good Something's rigs, gonna work out. it's going to work out for you. Look, if a guy with a big like me can get a sort like my missus, like, there's hope for anyone. There's literally hope for anyone. Um, but yeah, seeing the top 10 on Netflix, you go on. Fuck, is that what is that what we've succumbed to? I wonder what the demo is though. So maybe it's like all young people on Netflix. Mm. Has it? Nah, net- I feel it can't be that young. Surely not. Nah. Because like I, I mean, I watch Netflix, so and so. What do you reckon the youngest streaming platform would be? Probably Netflix, TikTok. though. Oh, you mean social oh, media? TV, yeah. I mean Netflix. Netflix. What yeah. else would they go on? Well, you've got what well, you got HBO. Oh, that's not in Australia. Um, you got Apple TV. Stan. Stan, Stan's underrated. Yeah? Yeah, like I, I used to think like, I remember when I first met my missus trying to be like big note and she was like, oh, you know, I've got Stan, like maybe we could watch on on Stan. <laughs> and I was like, Killing. Stan, like you serious? This is like, that's <laughs> shit, Stan's shit. And then she was, she like, so it was like, became a running joke and she would try to make me watch something on Stan and I would be like, nah, not watching anything on Stan. Are you a series man? I do like a series, but eventually I caved and I watched, I looked at Stan's like, library and it's actually mad i'm telling you right now stan's actually mad like what well they got yellowstone for example they got yellowstone true they got they had power the power yeah what's another one billion they, they got good billions? stuff yeah they got good stuff good. stan um and they're killing it they're mm. killing because obviously they're owned by nine mm. and apparently the revenue they generate is massive like it's a huge reason why they're i guess not concerned about in the future owned by nine. sorry i didn't know oh that. didn't you nah. yeah stan's owned by nine ko's owned by uh fox Oh yeah, didn't you know that? Oh no, I, t- I think I did know Ko, but no, I didn't know Nine was Nine owned. Pretty Stan. sure. Can you check that, Maddie? Yeah, yeah it's owned by Nine. That's mad. Yeah, and that's why like they've stepped into the streaming world. Like you don't see any panic about from Nine in regards to streaming because mm. they're killing it with Stan. And as I said, I used to be like, nah, Stan's not that good. Just watch Netflix. Stan's actually mad. It's actually yeah, mad. What are you a series man? Oh, but I don't even watch. I don't watch TV anymore. That's that's where I'm at. But yeah, series man, I reckon. Well, what, what's the last one you watched? Last one I watched, I reckon, Vikings. I just, I just was like the I second said, season, no, the second version or the old version. First one with Ragnar. Yeah, bro, how good? Yeah, so good. But it gets it gets shit last season. Yeah, the last to the end, it's just like you, they're just trying to. Like, they're padding it out. To go. Yeah, nowhere yeah. to go. But when Ragnar is the dude, it was mad. It's so good, bro. Far out, that's a good show. Are you a Game of Thrones man? 
I never really got into it, eh? Yeah, I'm one great. of them that like dropped off after the first season. Really? Yeah. Mate, it's so everyone, good. Like, Give mate, it a chance. I need to go but down that stop watching hole. it after about season five or six. Yeah. Because then it just goes... Uh, sorry, to, sorry to interrupt. And I know this is coming out tomorrow, so this doesn't have any bearing, but I feel like you'd want to know this. Pat Harrigan just extended to 2028. Oh, wow. Oof. Mm. Yes. Bro, did Aaron Rodgers retire? Paddy Carrigan, 2028. Paddy Carrigan, that's massive. That is massive. So, uh, you know what? First of all, I thought he said Paddy Holmes, so that's why I oh, went really? to NFL. I just want to make that clear. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> that he was said random go anywhere with it, so I was like, <laughs> fucking, you know what? <laughs> that's, like, that's a weird jump. Sorry, bro. Paddy uh, Carrigan, fuck yeah. <laughs> Broncos, baby. Because, <laughs> like, no wonder now that that news came out about all the clubs chasing him, they must have been trying to put, like, his management must have been trying to put He's pressure on the Bronx. property. Hot property, marketable, tough, gun, origin, will be a captain. So I reckon his management put that out yesterday that everyone's interested in him to close the deal, get it done. 2028. He's a, that's as hot. Like, he's on a on a high. You can't, like, oh. peak time to sign. I wonder how much they got him for. What do you reckon, about 750, 800? Have to be. Sure, minimum. If you're going to lock him up. Surely. And it'd be a, that's only going one way over the over the next few yeah, years. Yeah, uh, because there's no way Paddy's taking less than 750. No, you can't. Because your stocks are right. Like he's too good. What was that? 2028. 28. That's a long time, bro. And the cap's gone up as well. Yeah. So that's like 500 of yesteryear. Yeah. Fucking hell, eh? Congratulations, Paddy. Congratulations, Broncos. Yeah. What a what a win. How good. Um, what yeah? What's what other TV show have you watched? Mm, what else have I really got? I did get into Yellowstone a little bit. Mm. I've, I've watched one season. I've got to start the second season. I, I don't know. I just it's good. It's just not pulling me in though. What's yeah. what's your what's your number one right now? Recently, House of the Dragon. Oh, okay. So good. Bro. And what about all time? All time? Oh, Game of Thrones would have to be up really? there. First first six seasons. Yeah, mate. Right. Some of the best TV you'll ever watch. Uh, yeah, oh man, TV series. I'm trying to think. Oh, there's a, there's a TV series called Black Sails. It's like Black a pirate Sails, one. Yeah. It's mad. Yeah. It's so good, bro. Far out, it's good. Yeah. So Game of Thrones, that. There's another one I'm trying to think of that. Oh, Succession. Succession. Bro, you got to watch that. It's so hectic. I love that when, usually I'm on the other, I'm, I'm kind of like that with movies, but I love when someone you know hasn't watched something mad and you're like, fuck, I'm jealous of you. A hundred percent. I would love Succession. to watch it all again. Succession. Because what it is, is Netflix. That, um, Apple maybe Okay Apple I think it's HBO Made by HBO oh, so ball, it's bro, Ballers Ballers is right up there for me Oh really? Ballers? Oh, I haven't watched Ballers Haven't you? No, no oh, Really? Man Okay I'll have to try now and I feel a that's, I feel jealous for you Oh really? Is that bro, good? It's okay. best It's literally The Rock He's the man Yeah yeah And yeah. he's a sports agent And it's But it's basically real life Like got real people Relevant to the time Oh really? Bro, you would okay. love it Well with Succession They reckon it's like similar I think it's the Murdoch family that how how like True. they came about is in like they take inspiration yeah, right. and basically what it is is like one main guy that created it all and he's got all these kids that are like complete fuck ups but they're all vying to like own the company it's it's so good bro it's yeah. so so good um and what will actually sports bet what they'll do for us is if i go to them with like a good can you make a market for this mm. so the market might be like Oh, who yes. dies first in Game of the Thrones or whatever? Game of Thrones. They'll, be, they'll put they'll put that together for us. And How so good. yeah, there's so many fun things we'll be able has to anyone, do. Has anyone has anyone won on one of those like random bets? Oh, they'd like be heaps exotic still, bets. You know I mean? Yeah, fucking oath. They, they do be. anything. Like, they'll, mate, they'll pump anything. Hundred percent. Well, they do like who's getting kicked off Love Island and that. Yeah, yeah, they do yeah. stuff like that. Um, <laughs> uh, pack, all right, now on the next one. Now unusual story segment. Man found alive nine years after he was cremated. How? <laughs> How? A Chinese man has been found alive nine years after he was cremated. In 2014, Zhu Kanglu was confirmed dead following a car accident with family and friends identifying the body, which was sub subsequently cremated. cremated. However, a man who was behaving strangely in a village nine years later led to a DNA test that showed he was Zhu. Zhu was able to write the names of his relatives. Authorities are now hoping to identify the man who was mistakenly thought to be Zhu in 2014. Holy. So, so he just went walkabout. He said, I'm going to get some milk and never came back. And like wow. just started a new life? Holy. And just or said, he, stuff it. He was in on it. 
I want to do that with a wife. Next time she sends me that text message of like, oh, you didn't put your clothes away, I'm getting cremated and bouncing. Sorry, Dan. Sorry, Dennis dead. <laughs> Dennis died. <laughs> I'll be, oh, you know what? I'll go pour some smoothies over and... <laughs> go back to Thailand, bro, and do what I did. Some yeah. bloke in a bar. And yeah. And pubs in... What would, the, the what would it be the translation for... What's what's bloke or guy in... in you don't know? Well, I should, but no. Nah. <laughs> did you used to speak any Yeah, Thai? I did, like, enough to... To get I by. I really should have done more, but I kind of figured, like, well... But uh, enough to like have conversations. But when you're over there, mm. the power, mm. if, you, if you're a, like, I think it's called a Farang, like a white person, mm. the power you have if you can just chat Thai. Like, oh, really? Mate. Just different. Best. Okay. Okay. I wish I did. I could like, I'd said what I needed to say. Yeah, yeah. But to have conversations and even just like not let them know and just, oh, is that what you're saying? Yeah, just okay. Just know what they're saying. Does they, they be sneaky talk sometimes? Shit talk shit? Oh, wow. Who knows what they're saying? Mate, um, know, yeah. you know what is funny when I went over to Europe is like how arrogantly we just expect everyone to speak English. Yeah, it's funny. Whereas like that. if like, they... That's the universal language. Yeah, whereas if they came to us and started speaking French, we'd be like, I don't know what you're saying and I'm not even going to try to know what you're saying. Mm. Whereas over there, they genuine usually try. Have like, you tried to learn another language? Nah, nah, I haven't. I tried when... um. So obviously Thai, I tried mm. Spanish. I was real keen on. Mm. I lived there for a little bit, but I just liked the language. And then I actually, I remember I told you when when all that stuff went down with the Sada, mm. I was like, "Fuck this! I'm like, what? There's got to be another way out." So I signed a rugby contract. Did I tell you that? I think. Anyway, tell us anyway. Yeah. So I was like, "Oh well, I'm just going to do this, figuring like, you know, whatever. That's how mm. it must work. I'll get out of here." Um, they're in the they're in the top French fourteen section Palisade. Like it would have been pretty cool. Would have been mad. You would have yeah. killed it too because you it were in prime so prime. Near. And I got like a cracker deal. It was like at the time, I don't know how much we're, we were getting paid, but it was like one fifty euro. No way. Car house. Like oh. it was pretty good deal. And it was it was signed done deal. Like I feel I feel bad. I just didn't know that was going to be the outcome for me. Like yeah, in terms okay. of the suspension. Yeah. So okay. I signed it with the intention of like I had to have the conversation with Raiders. I was like oh, I'm going going to do this signed it and then i started learning french up and um up up in like this like little school thing in canberra while mm. I was, I was there. it was torture bro i was so shit <laughs> <laughs> and so so what the asada thing happens and they said you're not allowed to play in any sport around the world yeah it's just like no you don't like Fuck, you don't like yeah. i said table tennis no. oh my god yeah, it's wild um well, were they understanding like what the club were they a bit upset oh they yeah. i think they were pretty filthy yeah Fuck. so i'd like Sucks, sucks that that happened. But then um, there was a player. I don't know if you remember him. He played a couple of games for the Storm. Elijah Nico. He was a mm. winger, big winger. But yeah. um, he ended up. They ended up taking him, recruiting him, him and he went over there. He so. went sweet. Fuck. There's so many like Aussies and that that go over there. Bro, that. It's a cracker deal. You play there for I think like two years. I could be wrong. Mm. Maybe four. You retire, stay there. You're on the pension. No way. Yeah, yeah you get a pension. What? Yep. How does that work? What? I don't know. You st- if you, you go over there and you're like working there for X amount of time, you yeah. retire and you stay there, you get a pension. Like that's that's facts. I'm just, I could be off on years and the stuff The details like that. and that. But that's what, that's what they do. No way. Yes. That you're is getting mad. paid. That is actually hectic. Yeah. Um, now, um, sperm donator, a uh, sperm donor. <laughs> donator. <laughs> donator. <laughs> sperm donor. Donor. With 60 children exposed after parents realised their kids all look the same. <laughs> a sperm don- uh, donor who used fake names to father more than 60 children in Australia has been exposed after the new parents in a get-together noticed that their babies look similar. But what do you mean? Wow. Um, what, what, like, what's he done wrong? He's well, just donating sperm. Well, the, so, okay, so the man used four different aliases, aliases to donate sperm to members of the LGBTQ plus community. Oh. After this, the parents didn't waste any time in calling IVF clinics across Australia to find out if the same man had been doing the rounds. Soon they found out the donor had only used Fertility First in Sydney, but had been selling his sperm on Facebook through unofficial methods for wow. gifts. Under the Human the Tissue Act in Australia, it is illegal to pay or give gifts off for human sperm. Did you say human tissue? Yeah, it says act. human. Is that, is that what it's supposed to be? Human Tissue Act? <laughs> I mean, Does it not sound makes right. Sense. Human Tissue Act. You think about it. <laughs> <laughs> the Human Tissue Act in Australia, it is illegal to pay or give gifts for human sperm. Any offence in this regard carries a jail term of up to 15 years. I can go into jail for giving a gift for someone's sperm. What the hell? 
I don't. How did it end up with that many people though? If he was doing it unofficially, that is absolutely wild. And they all look the same. What the? Like you know what I mean? Could you imagine you roll in and you say, so "What are we? Are we? Are we thinking like this guy's just got this weird plan in his head that he's like, I want to have like fathers. kids everywhere? Yeah, yeah. Like my DNA everywhere. Has to just have this Surely, sick holy, that is. Plan. It is the tissue act. It's an interesting name. That is, a, is it sperm related? Or is it all things? It's it's like all things. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The that tissue makes act. Sense. Still weird. <laughs> Very weird. Um, what would your superpower be? Um, I think the ability to like say we were doing something right now, mm. and I just said whatever the fuck I wanted, but then I could rewind and just go. No, I'm going to go. <laughs> you know That's I mean? a great so, like, superpower. Do anything crazy. Do yeah. think about the wildest thing. Yeah, like, yeah. Think about the sick fucking things you would do to Maddie right now. But then you could. <laughs> But then you can rewind. <laughs> so time, time travel. Yeah, just like, well, and yeah, maybe there's some rules around it and it's yeah. like, I can only go back X, whatever, but just like. One hour? Bang. Yeah, that'd be, that's enough, isn't it? Yeah, yeah surely. That's oh, because you sometimes you'd want to have a whole night of craziness, yeah. you know? But I'll take what I can get. I think that, that superpower would be mad. Yeah, that you would be. You literally could do anything and know that, okay, I can just. Go back go and sweep. Yeah. Think of the stuff you'd do. Could you like <laughs> blokes that you hate just walk up, oh. king, well, king hit them, right. get it out of the system, right. then right. rewind time. <laughs> oh. What about uh, you? Uh, my superpower, what would I do? One that is like the opposite of what I want. Like people say that they want this as a superpower. I think that this would be the worst thing. Read people's minds. That's, that's not a superpower, that's a curse. Would you honestly like to read people's minds? I know what you're saying. Like, it's one of those things I feel like at first you'd be like, ah, oh, this is mad. And what's that movie where um, he can he can listen, like he can hear, hear people's people? thoughts? Fuck, oh, I don't and know. And then it's just he hearing everything. Oh, I think it's just like Bruce Almighty or something where, mm. you know, he can, and it's like, and he just gets off it. You can hear everything everyone's saying. But like, think of Selectively the though, would that be nice? No, I just, in the negative stuff that you, you would hear, know. you don't want, I don't want to know that shit, man. Yeah, think about yeah, the yeah. negative thoughts rolling around. Like think about a person you love. They would have some pretty negative thoughts like mm. about you at times. Mm. And so you just sitting there and you're like reading their mind and they're sitting there going, fuck this bloke. Like I'm fucking going to bounce or something. You know what I mean? Whatever it is in an angry moment. Yeah, And they're not thinking like that. You know, you say things knowing that the other person isn't going to yeah. hear it. So like, yeah, like you talk way differently than what yeah, you would yeah, you know you're way more polite when they're in you can see them as a human yeah. being it's almost like a natural tendency to like not want to hurt their feelings yeah. Yeah. that's why the internet's so strange is like so wait you would want that i wouldn't want that okay. no fucking way <laughs> um oh man what would be a superpower your breathing must be like a superpower <laughs> <laughs> mate you know what what about what about like Virgo? can't oh, get it a... well, surely I, I, I was like that's so you know what's happened bro during COVID, mm. they scrapped a heap of rules in terms of budget cuts. Mm. So one of them was like um, private health. You don't get private health after you retire. So like they cut that and there were a few other ones. They obviously, from the way I'm perceiving it, they haven't brought it back. What? So like you used to be able to get two years of education, two years to get anything fixed, all your surgeries. Mm. So like at the end of the day, f that happened, like proof, you can you prove You can see it. that it happened. That happened to yeah. him, like you got to fix it. Surely. They, no, they'll come forward. They yeah, have to. Because, like, I understand... The fact that he had to do that, though, is It's crazy. I understand if it was vague, like, his knee was sore and, or whatever. I could get where the NRL coming from. But, like, everyone knows he did that. Mm. And also, everyone in rugby league knows you can't get your nose fixed until you retire because you're just going to break it again. <laughs> what's, yes. Oh, what's funny? Did you, did you put it in a Bruh. Hey, look, NRL, you've reached out. I, I want yeah, to go to NRL, Turkey. actually. I, to, well, I need to go to Turkey to get it fixed. <laughs> <laughs> Dead and there's no nose jobs, bro. It's hey, <laughs> is there a two for one? Pro if once we get Fergie's fixed, can we get mine fixed too? Because I still got a deviated septum from NRL. <laughs> so well, I haven't asked him, but like, fuck, that looks. It's. I mean, it doesn't look good, but functionally, <laughs> it can't be operating well. It can't be. <laughs> he's sleep. He's mouth breathing. Oh, his sleep Flat must sick. be. He must be a dragon when he's sleeping. Oh, oh my god. So, Vlandy's near machine ain't gonna fix that. Nah, nah. Vlandy's, if you're gonna do Fergos, can you do mine too, please, bro? Because <laughs> I didn't get mine fixed. I'm so stupid. Because like, what happened was I broke my nose, and they were like, "Look, you can go now and fix it." but you're going to break it again. So there's no point yeah, in doing yeah, that. Yeah, so fair. I didn't do it. Of course. And then obviously I quit and then you just get used to it and you just like, yeah, stuff mm. it. So that's, it's my, definitely my fault. But if you're handing out- I didn't out think about it. I remember hearing that. I was like, <laughs> oh, but at the end of the day, like 
I'm not going in to get certain. Like I get it. I know I know heaps of the boys who have mm. been like, nah, I'm sorting this shit out. Yeah. But, Last thing I'm thinking is like, yeah, okay, what surgery can I get? I'm oh, I'm no avoiding way. That. Surgery, Roksha. Like, yeah, Roksha. I'm avoiding that at all costs. Unless it's like, maybe the, if it's affecting my breathing and that though, like, I'm doing mm. it. So, Vlandis, if you're giving out nose jobs, <laughs> I'll take one. I'll take one, please. Seriously. Um, what else we got here? Is a hot dog a sandwich? Oh, no. It's not a sandwich. Technically, though, it's like saying... What is it, um, Matt? Is tomato is a fruit? Is it right? I don't know. A, Rock Matty, goes be, it's because it grows on like. Oh, you know like what I mean? So trees like and technically, shit. a hot dog's a sandwich, but I'm not going to ignore. No, it. it's a roll. I'm not going. Rolls yeah, aren't sandwiches. Yeah, yeah, yeah a, rolls aren't sandwiches. Yeah, roll. Sandwiches are bread yeah. on bread. Yeah. You reckon? Do you reckon it's sandwiches? Uh, I'm with his. I'm with his for sure. What do you? I don't, I don't reckon it's a Because if someone said oh, I had a sandwich and then I, then I found out they had a hot dog, I'd be like, you're a liar. I'd be filthy. Yeah, I'd be like, mate, you're an idiot. come on, bro. Stop talking <laughs> shit. Um, we actually sausage are, sandwich is different, obviously. Yeah, well, it's a bread and you're rolling exactly. in the bread. Uh, best TV show. We'll do best movie of all time. Oh, best movie. <sighs> best movie of all time is tough, isn't it? I'm like a... There's so many. I feel what what pop, what pops in my mind is like I love the. It's not like really funny ones. I mean, you can't go past like a Gladiator. Yeah, Gladiator's like it may have changed because I've like it's been a while, but at the time, Gladiator was number one for me. It was so good. That or Lord of the Rings. Oh yeah, Lord of the Rings was hectic, bro. Yeah. Such a good series, man. Like you don't get much better than that. And if you watch it now, it still holds up. Like it doesn't look like old wonky. Well, all right, how about this? What's the movie you've watched the most? Oh, probably Gladiator or Lord of the Rings. Yeah, yeah. I reckon Gladiator, but then Wedding Crashes. Oh, that's Bro, a great movie. Those two together. Yeah. That's the dream combo. Oh, I wish they would do more. <laughs> Why have they not I done know. another one? Fuck. Mom, the meat loaf. Right, those two, like um, Vince Vaughn and uh, Owen Wilson, like yeah. just the way they played off each other, right, that was the best. Could you imagine like a Wedding Crashes 2? <laughs> How have they not done it? I know, though? it would go off. Like surely, surely one of them gets married. Yeah, you know what I mean? and then the other one's like filthy because he's lost his mate. That's what I'm saying. It's right, the script writes itself. Right. Oh, yeah. Are we direct- um, can we be directors? Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Hey, uh, Maddie, Yo. what's your favourite movie of all time? Ooh, probably Eight Mile because he's Eminem. Fucking <laughs> tragic. You know, this will shock you, but I, I actually only watched Gladiator for the first time about a month ago. Wow, bro! That's what weird. he used to be a Rabbitohs fan. Oh, he is a Rabbitohs yeah. fan too. Die when, hard. when Russell did this, were you like, what's, what is that about? Yeah, yeah, I had no you idea until no last month. That would have been a shit moment for you. I did don't you, really, yeah, I don't really get it. Did you like things. it? I loved it. I thought it was all, I, could, I watched it and I was like, so, you know what, same as, um, same as Wedding Crashes. I watched that last year for the first time. Where have you been? I don't know. What have you been doing? I, don't, I didn't realise that I didn't watch mov- movies a lot until my <laughs> missus was like, have you seen this like a hundred times to every movie? Right, I'd be like, nah. loving life, like... When we talk about you haven't watched something, yeah. I can only imagine how many things you've still got to watch. <laughs> yeah. It's so exciting. Okay, what, okay, what was before, like, as in, what is your favourite movie all time? Uh, I liked The Hangover. I've watched that like oh, 20 yeah, times. Yeah, that's, that's a solid. classic. That is, did you die? That is a classic. <laughs> yeah. That that hit the world by storm and it, you go back, especially, is and it Mr. One? Chow, like, what a goat. Mr. Chow was literally a goat. Because there's, <laughs> there's three, isn't there? There's One three, and two yeah. are good. Three yeah. is a bit, yeah. Nah, they pushed it. And what about Tyson comes out with the, the tiger or whatever? <laughs> Mate, how good is Mike Tyson? Mike Tyson's turned into like an old philosophical warrior. It's pretty cool. Like I love those videos where he just gets, he's talking and it's so powerful. He's getting choked yeah, up. The intensity. Oh. Like far out. And people forget how much of a killer he was. He, he, he was genuinely, we haven't had a heavyweight as feared as him ever, I don't nah, reckon. There's no, nothing will be like, like Tyson Fury's the goat, but mm. he's different. He's just like a lad, a brawler. Mm. No mm. one will ever be like Tyson. Yeah, he was like a he large, uh, Tyson Fury's larger than life, but. Not in a different way. Like Mike Tyson represented something primal, like right, this. proper. This no, there's nothing, I don't think there's been anything. I can't think of anything really like that. Even in MMA, no one's been as feared as like Tyson. Bro, would think about some of the shit he said. Like, oh. Think about those clips that you've seen. That press conference. Mate, well, imagine fighting him. <laughs> imagine stepping in the ring with when he was at his peak of scariness, going, "Holy shit!" Oh, like you could Surely tell you've already lost. Yeah, before you go in you there, could tell in some of those. You could tell some of those fighters in their eyes they'd already lost. They were going, "Fuck." 
And when he and that stare down where he's just like <laughs> oh my tracking God. you with his eyes. Like and you, he's like had this I always say the scariest people are people that look like they're in pain. He always looked like he was in pain. Mm. He was that angry. And then when he it takes him nothing to talk about a part of his life yeah. or a person, he's just like nearly in tears, but it's also like he's a psychopath. He is genuine. So it's <laughs> but he's also like he's so smart for a guy that came from literally the ghetto, yeah. ghetto, ghetto, ghetto. He is super, super yeah, smart. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I love the. I love when he throws it. Like when he goes into deep chatting about how he um, studied all of the greats. Yeah, I love that. Um, I don't know what you, what you call it, but all the great like warriors or yep. leaders. Like, like that's cool. Yeah, fucking oath. And it like is. does it not just tossing it up as if it's a ref, like going deep into details if he's been yep. told to study it. Hundred percent. Like yeah, like p- other people will bring it up and he'll like yeah. go through their whole life story. <laughs> Um, yeah, Mike Tyson, he is unbelievable. And, and then the flip side is the bro's got like heaps of pigeons. I know. It's, it's so like, and that's what made him become a fighter because his pigeon got killed by that's an older right. kid. Mech snap. Oh my <laughs> God. Far out. Pigeons. It's such a sh- pigeon. So random. So he's random. From, I suppose he's from like Brooklyn, so. <clears throat> I don't know if it's, it's Is that a pigeon, pigeon central? <laughs> 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 is that like <laughs> home imagine, of pigeons? Like, New York City is like heaps of pigeons. And <laughs> oh, did you end up finding out if Aaron Rodgers retired or what? Oh, I stopped. I, I typed it in and it and it oh, just be, said it just oh, said like has he retired? There was no oh, definite okay. articles. Because I watched this podcast, bro. You know, I'm into like all that like cool shit and human optimization. That yep. Aubrey Marcus. Yeah. You know, okay. Yeah. Oh, he's from Honor. The Honor guy. Yeah. Yeah. But he does some wild stuff. Mm. Um, Aaron Rodgers did this thing. It's it's called the darkness. Mm. Five days in a room, pitch black, no interaction, no sound, nothing. Oh, it's wild. That is fuck. That's weird. It's crazy. Dark. Like you, you, dark, you, you dark. go in what? So he just gets fed food, put no, in. No, no, no. So you've got your bed. Yeah. There's a bathroom. It's all dark. Okay. And you see the be- the food's laid out for the five days. And and it's what just. Like dry food, so you don't yeah, cook it or anything. No, no, no. It's all it's all prepped. And what was the like point of it? Well, I think you just it's obviously there's this meditative go inward, reflect, and like, but it's extreme. Oh but, my um, god! Yeah, I just started listening to the podcast, so I haven't gotten to the the outcome. But I feel like I think he I think he pulls it, but he may he may not. I don't know what the outcome was, but it's pretty wild. Far out in darkness. I'd understand. It's like intense. Like silent. And he said, the roller coaster of it was like. Bit, of, bit excited at first, yeah. and then you just right, you'd be rattled for like two day two three. So are you pitch black, pitch black, like not not even yeah. They were he, Aubrey Marcus said the definition to send someone psycho is when you're in like one of those psych wards yeah. and there's only a slither of light. That's actually how you go oh. like turn into a psychopath. But this is like like dark, dark, no noise, no no nothing. I don't know. Like, I don't understand what the point of that is. Like, surely you can do it in a better environment, you know? Like, yeah. Surely you can do it in the sun. I was like, so, silent retreat, for example. <laughs> get the sun on you. Get some rays on your brush. In the dark. Holy, <laughs> scary. Um, that is us done and dusted for Packer Up, boys. Thanks, Shandor, for joining us, Thank mate. You, and mate. Uh, yeah, as always, guys. We will uh, see you next week on Packer Up, boys. This show is brought to you by Sportsbet. What are you really gambling with? For free and confidential support, call 1-800-858-858 or visit gamblinghelponline.org.au.